Lock up the speed Inside my pores It goes electric, baby, when I'm turning on All through my city All through my home We're flying up, no ceiling When we're in our zone I got that sunshine in my pocket Got that good song in my feet Feel that hot breath in my body And it drops Oh, I can't take my eyes above it Moving so phenomenally You gon' like the way we rock it So don't stop And I know the lights when everything goes Nowhere to go, but I'm getting go close When we're moving, you already know So just imagine Nothing I can see but you when you dance, dance, dance You're creeping up on you, so just dance, dance, dance All those things I should do when you dance, dance, dance And ain't nobody made no sense, can't dance, 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 dance. Listen, everyone, before the show gets started, I want to first let you know that you can always support the show via Cash App, Zelle, PayPal. All financial contributions are greatly appreciated, and we really do thank you so much. Now sit back and let's enjoy. Hey, hey. What's up, hey, Raz? Hi, Raz. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, how you doing? Thank, hey, how you doing <laughs> again? Thank you for joining us. You're the man of the hour. Uh, uh, that video, I don't know if you saw the opening video, but... I'll, I'll definitely get that to you because it was pretty it's, it's really good. There's so many of us out here that stand with you, Raz. So many. I, I, like I was telling the audience, I have always believed you. So, hey, you got the floor. Tell us what you want us, want us to know. Tell us what you here to say. now we ain't got to play the video. <laughs> right. The video was amazing. No, the video was amazing. What's up, everybody? I'm glad we all could come together for this matter. My biggest problem that I have, and I'll, I'll put it in the best words that I can, is that when I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm baptized, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, I truly live and walk um, in my own truth. And what bothers me the most is when I see Jehovah Witnesses that I know from my own personal experience, I know they're out there hurting people. And I just feel that people like that need to confess their sin publicly. And get some help now if, if it's if they have to go to jail that's on them you make your bed you lying you know, i wouldn't personally want to put anybody in jail i wouldn't want to be in jail so i don't wish that on anybody i just feel like it's a mental it's a mental illness and clearly somebody must have did it to them or maybe they just something that they, they grew up doing and i just feel like it's it sucks because for many many years i've been bullied bullied out of the country literally i was living in china for seven years and I've had a nice- I actually day. thought you was over there doing work. That's what I, I thought. Mean, I, I was doing very, very well, but when during the time I left, I had a lot of controversy around. You know I, mean? I remember that. I remember that. I'm not the kid crying wolf. It was just more, I'm hurt. I'm fucking in pain. I'm, 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 I'm you know, like um, my career is upside down. I got people calling me names, making fun of me in songs. And that's not cool, especially as a culture. Like shame on us. You know? I'm always Absolutely. me. You know, always be uh, keep it a buck. Um, the thing that hurts me the most is when I'm out here trying to promote 
my businesses the things that i'm doing you have these big bullies because they're they think they're powerful or they think they have this power that they can just shut down interviews or shut down what i'm trying to say all that did was piss me off all that did was make me reach deeper in my bank account to continue to fight for this cause so to be able to have this platform where we can share and discuss and, and just talk on how we feel i don't want to go into any graphic details because i have a documentary coming up and i, I look forward to really vindicating myself it's not really about anybody else it's really about me and my healing but most importantly the cool part is through my strength and through my healing other people are able to get strength and hopefully find it. well so i just really feel that i hope that account they they, they, they they're held accountable for their actions i i challenge the community the jehovah witness community to step forward and really look at this very closely and possibly even um start an investigation but the simple fact is that it's, it's, you know, enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? We're in the era of me too, you know, and most importantly, it's about coming together at one, making sure that we really seriously are able to bring these people to justice. What that's going to look like vengeance is the Lord. So I really don't know, but I'm here to pause because I've been walking around traumatized since I've been a kid. And to try to sweep it the rug as if nothing ever happened or I'm crazy or discredited. I've been through so many stories and, you know, for, for many years I've tried to just, and I continue to move forward with my life and my projects and, and, and so on and so forth. But clearly about a week and a half weeks ago, I was doing an interview and they sent the cease and desist letter. Hmm. With Jason Lee. Jason uh, Lee. Yeah, with Jason. Was it Jason, Jason Lee, yeah. And that's another, and that's another form of bullying. So, you know, I, I, I enough is enough so whatever i have to do to stand in the gap and you know uh, continue to speak my truth um it it, it, it is the lord so i i, I hope that's something uh happens with the job. well we thank you so much for even for calling out the jehovah witnesses in that way and i just want to jump in to say uh as raz is uh taking a breath here is that uh, Raz has gotten together uh, with a few others and he started a GoFundMe in order to begin to fund his, uh, uh, somebody in the audience has already told me that they donated already. So we thank you so much just from us putting up the stream. So we thank you for that. Um, and he also, we I was able to start a petition through change.org for him to, in order to get Marcus Houston and Chris Stokes off the TV. Do you know that Marcus Houston has a new movie coming out, or it came out, I think, last week, where he's a high school teacher. He's around children. Why do they always want to do uh, movies on content for children? And these these accusations have been out here. It's a, been an open secret in Hollywood. Whereas, why, why do you think in Hollywood that sexual abuse is so pervasive and that when people call it out, it just not, does not go anywhere? Um, I'm thinking like R. Kelly. No, I, I just I disagree. I think you know the times are changing. You know, what I'm saying? Um, there's always you know what's done in dark comes to light. I really can't speak to the industry per se. I'm pretty aware of every sector. There's some form of abuse. I can just only speak on my situation with with them. It's unacceptable. Um, you know, for example, that movie needs to be boycotted. Absolutely. There's kids in it. <laughs> Um, no. Simon, did you want to jump in here? I'm oh, sorry. Well, I just wanted to uh, commend, first of all, uh, Rad for, first of all, being vocal about it. Um, I know it's not an easy thing. And uh, when somebody, you know, encroaches upon you that way, they try to embarrass you. They try to humiliate you. They try to shut you up. So for you to have found the strength to be able to confront this, to be able to call out your accusers, that, 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 that's amazing. Um, I'm sure that Chris and Mark are trying to go about it if nothing is happening. They're blocking people who raise accusations in front of people. They're trying not to rock the boat and trying to move on with their new life. The problem is in the organization, especially the way that their uh, policies are, there's a lot of crevices and, and dark places that they try to hide in. What you're doing right now is exposing light. And... Uh, I'm just happy that you're allowing us to partner with you so that we can um, 
bring attention to people in, in the position where they'll be forced to investigate uh, you know uh, what you're saying happened and uh, like I say I just th I thank you for uh, allowing us to be able to help you with that Nah, you know with teamwork makes the dream work and I you know God has given me the strength you know um, the support is giving me the strength because when it's all said and done you know I typically like to mind my own business you know but when you're starting to get in the way of my livelihood and how I try to provide for my family and for myself you know that, that means you're still trying to like cyber bully me you know new life I don't know if you can live a new life until you shared your old one absolutely you know what I mean and it's they're fucking liars. You know what I'm saying? So whoever needs to see this video over in the Jehovah Witness community, whoever we need to call, wherever the petition is at, we definitely need to keep this moving. You know what I mean? Because Absolutely. I'm here to tell you guys, I have no reason to lie. Rather, and I noticed they they tried to pay me off. They tried to have me do this retraction tape years ago, but other people started to come forward. Shout out to Quentin Tarver and different people that had these experiences. And, um... You know, having money, it can help a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, we're in a different era now, and I believe it's it's, it's time that we have justice. And we're going to get justice if we all work together. Right. It's the, like they call it, this the Time's Up movement. It's time up, and it's me too. Like, I was talking to Matt when Matt was talking about this. I think we were talking about, you know, how to go about the interview and, and when you agreed to uh, come on. And Matt was talking about how important it is, especially men, to speak up, right? Absolutely. Um, that is, uh, again, just like Simon said, I really appreciate you coming on. And it's, you know, as you mentioned, culturally, there's a lot of issues because we don't speak up about abuse when it happens to men, unfortunately, a lot. Uh, there's a big stigma. And the fact that you are being so brave and courageous and speaking about it, and you've been doing it for so long is important. Uh, Spence and I had discussed, like, I remember hearing about this when I was in high school, and that was 10 plus years ago. Right. And, you know, like, I, I, I remember very clearly, you know, hearing about Chris Stokes and what he had been doing from other Jehovah's Witnesses. So wow. the fact that this is still going on a decade plus later is is ridiculous and you know it really needs to be stopped. So the fact that you're continuing um and and you're speaking out even you know louder it's it's something to be commended and it's something that I'm happy to take part in and support. All praise to the God, man. You know, um it's my calling just to, you know, just to live my truth and serve God. Like how can I like um serve God and serve two masters. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's many times they're like, well, you should have just shut this down. And da, 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 da. Like, I don't want to spend their energy time talking about these motherfuckers. I don't. I'm glad you cussing and not me, so. <laughs> right, because they get but, on jobs. <laughs> listen, Raj, you know, the, uh, somebody said in the comments about CPS, which, you know, they say, um, uh, they were saying that, you know, they need, Matt was saying that they need two people to verify this. Now, here's the thing. When when this stuff is reported, there's always somebody else who they report to, and then they get paid off. And then the story, the, 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 the situation goes away. And then they hope that, in hopes that these people get so outraged with it that they go kill themselves and i'm just like how is this how is this in any way shape form or fashion godly how is this any of that they're upset about r kelly black man bill cosby a black man and you have chris stokes marcus houston now mind you don't get me wrong i have always been this I didn't know anything was going on. I, I honestly I didn't. I was so engulfed with church myself, even though I still listen to the music. I didn't know this is how this is how secretive they had this stuff going on. Marcus Houston and Chris Stokes go on like scot free. They make fun of Raz B because he decides to speak out. Now what I find ironic is Lil Fizz gets on the show. 
J Bug gets on 106 and Park, works at BET. Um, Omarion, number one CD, whole bunch of followers, all this other stuff like that. And that just leaves Raz B. Raz B speaks out and he gets shit face. Can I say something though? Raz is still move Raz is still moving because Raz, I, you just dropped your uh new song. It's hot. Keep mm -hmm. it going. Keep it going. I mean, if I could have had time to put a clip in here, I would have, but I, I just applaud you for still working in your craft because a lot of people abuse pe child, child sex abuse survivors. They get shunned, they get put out. In our organization, they get kicked out and they kick, they treat it as if they're dead by their families if they report abuse. Mm -hmm. It has to change. You know, there needs to be, yeah. but even, the, even, even the abusers need to go get some help, you know? And maybe they don't need to go to jail. Maybe they do, but they need some help. I don't know, I'm not the person to decide that, but that shit ain't fair. And to walk around claim, oh, you're just Jehovah Witness and you try not to like, step up, be a man. Step up, be a man, be a man of God. Confess your sins publicly, you know what I'm saying? And maybe, maybe, maybe your, uh, your repercussions won't be that bad. But yeah. you know, So, Raz, make... can I ask you a question? Sure. How did you feel when uh, Marianne, I say Moniz and a few others who was probably didn't believe you or admitted that they had issues with your own testimony, how do you feel about people like that in our community now saying, okay, let's do something now? I mean, is it kind of like a betrayal? You know, when there's controversy, nobody really wants to associate their brand with that. So I understand. Um, so, but I do commend the people, shout out to Aran, shout out to Amari. I do commend the people that have decided to um, become an ally with me because they, they believe what they want to believe. You know, it's not... They weren't they weren't there in the room so they, they don't know but yet at the same time you know you know the truth when you hear it so for me it's um it's somewhat vindicating to where it's not so much more bullying going on and a lot more support and i believe when like in the past excuse me i'm really hungry but i believe in the past that um when they had me do that retraction tape that cut out all the support i could have had back then so it was even more traumatizing to have to walk through everything that I had to walk through and continue to move on with my life and my career, whether it be in China or so on and so forth. Because essentially, they, they, you know, they're like, well, we're not fucking with this guy. He, we're done with him. But God is, you know, God is the only person that can cancel me. I know, that's right. So, you know, it, it's frustrating, but I just, I do, I, I just stay focused on, on myself my mind you know my mental health stay in the gym read books you know what i mean but it irritates me sometimes so i, I try not to focus on that energy because it's, i be looking at them like you old bitch ass niggas not fuck you niggas like i really be like turned up in my crib <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> about a week ago i was like i slapped the shit out of both y'all like i want to fade fuck the courts fuck all this <laughs> you know what i'm saying we don't got to deal with it not, but we, right. we, we, we we can box though I think, you know, honestly, because yeah, I, I was going to, uh, oh. okay, I'm, I'll give me one second. I think because what really just kind of rubbed me all the way the wrong way is that they jump in the church. And I'm sitting here like, so you went, I mean, me personally, they could have stayed in the music industry and tried to hide. But to jump in the church just lets me further see and know just the hypocrisy that really goes on and how people will sit here and they act like they're just so righteous and holy. It was a um uh Spencer, it was a a, a, a screenshot where he where Christos was talking about he just got baptized. Well exactly being baptized doesn't mean you still don't like men and boys. Being baptized does not mean that you don't like the app, you don't have the appetite for the things that you do. And and again, let me say this, and I'm gonna hand it over to Matt. I remember, I don't know how or why, Chris Stokes had popped up in my news feed on Instagram. And I was like, dang, I would love to interview Chris Stokes. I said, you know, he's done a lot with B2K, whatever. That, that's where I was. And so he was very. Again, people know who I am. <laughs> people know who I am and they know good and well 
Once I find out something, it's they ass. Now, for y'all who don't like me to cuss, you can kiss my ass in these goddamn comments. First of all, <laughs> and then I just went through this whole cleaning. I just kind of like unfollowed a lot of people. When I heard Rasby talking, I was like, oh, that's why he didn't want to talk to me. Oh, what's her show ass? Because first of all, how dare you think that the church is going to protect you when even if you jump in the church, what you did was wrong. And I think the only thing that Raz even said was, hey, nigga, just go take the polygraph test. Matter of fact, just go apologize. I don't even think at this point, to be honest, apology can even help anything. Because really, you took the time and years to ruin this young man's life. And then what made it so bad was the rest of the group members talked about the boy like he was crazy. And now they want to be like, well, something did happen. Matt, to something did. Can I say something to that? And then we kids pass it to Matt. I just want to say that for people listening, I don't know if who needs to hear this, but even if you have mental issues, even if you have trauma, most of it's probably trauma. Even if it is trauma, whatever is going on with you, that does not make the sex abuse allegations any less credible. Right. Go ahead, Matt. That's so true, Spencer. Um, you know, what I was going to say was, first of all, Raz is really, um, he's really generous and he, he's definitely like, he's got a good heart because, you know, if that was me, I, I, I don't know if I would be saying, I don't know if I want them brothers to go to jail and I forgive them. Like, just like you said, we, we might have to fight, you know, but um, <laughs> it, it's interesting going back to what I mentioned before, I had heard about you know, some of the things that Chris Stokes was doing years ago, because I was friends with Jehovah's Witnesses uh, in California and in other places, and they had known about Chris Stokes. And, they, you know, they said he was a little weird and he had, um, you know, been doing some things that, that made them a little uncomfortable. And I, not that I had heard of any specific allegations of abuse, but it's just interesting, you know, like Jaws had mentioned that, you know, after these guys are doing this stuff, they jump straight into religion and they're preaching to be holy and they use this as a cover even if they do genuinely feel like they're doing the right thing and they have a clean heart you can't have a clean heart if you don't acknowledge what happened in the past the, the wrong that you did to someone and if you're continuing to lie then you're definitely not living with a clean heart mm -hmm. the bible says touch not that ones do my prophets no harm I'm one of God's anointed ones. I'm one of God's prophets. So it's really like my God against your puny God. Because the devil he's serving, we all know the God we all serve is a loving, truthful God. You know what I'm saying? And it's like they've been in the church. Chris been a Jehovah's Witness. You know what I'm saying? He's been a Jehovah's Witness. He got Marcus into being a Jehovah's Witness. You know? And he was doing that shit then. So what makes you think he ain't doing it now? Yes, you, you want to say something? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was I was pointing at you to say something. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I want to say a couple of things. Um, first off, again, thank you so much for coming out, especially as a male survivor. As uh, also a former survivor of child sexual abuse, it's really not easy. Um, I remember the second protest I did. First one, they kind of avoided me, and they would, like, walk around us, you know? But the second one, we kind of stood up um, in front of everybody. We had cameras there. We were doing a documentary. So they got a little, a little bit more testy, and I remember at one point, um, someone had mentioned that I was a survivor of child sexual abuse, and some of the elders that were there laughed at me. And one of my buddies that was there with me lost lost it and started like going at him because he was like, "How dare you laugh at her for being a child sexual abuse victim?" But like, this is not easy. Like coming out publicly about this stuff, trying to have some sort of palatable conversation about this in, in um, especially the international community. This is this is something that's international. Is, is really difficult and you know Jehovah's Witnesses put the cult in culture and a lot of this whether it's Hollywood, Catholicism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, whatever you want to say it is, a lot of them have these stipulations and policies in their organizations that cause this to continue and nobody wants to take accountability. Epstein pled the fifth, uh, the Watchtower Society is pleading the fifth in uh, Australia for the sex abuse crimes. Other organizations have come forward and said, we're sorry this happened to you. We want to address this within our organization and change what we need to change. Jehovah's Witnesses have outright refused, outright refused to do anything about it. 
so really it's 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 one thing if you have a problem in your culture and your society and people start using their voices and speak, speak speaking out and you guys can actually get somewhere with jehovah's witnesses all they've done is change their terminology to make it less easy for the press to attack them the press is what they're most afraid of that's like their kryptonite so by having you come out and speak about your story by having other survivors come out about, and speak about their stories, that's the only way really through the press to do any sort of legislative change. And, 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 and legal action too. We can file, yes, absolutely. We can yeah. file a lawsuit against the Jehovah Witnesses as well. So I'm sorry it happened to you, but God put it in that we can't handle. And we, we are all here clearly to change the world. And how we do that, we change the world by coming together and letting God do this. And we're doing a great job, you know what I mean? Um, for me, and I'm sure that for all of us, this this is our healing process. You know what I mean? To be able to feel whole again. Because when you really sit back, like, I tried to, when I was a kid, when I was a little young, I tried to judge by what was going on. Now I look back, it's like, nah, them niggas molested you, bro. <laughs> like, for real. Like, you were underage. And you were, you were dealing with grown man and grown woman. And they've done this before. They're probably still doing it. Probably. Yeah, that's the other thing too. The more people plead the fifth, or the more people do things, especially with with people who are of a younger age, there's a high chance that they're still continuing to do this behavior. It's been studied now for many, many years, and I'm not saying the psychology is completely there yet. It's still really early science. But as far as recidivism, for people who engage in pedophilic behavior, it's very high. People have a hard time staying away from that if they have that tendency. And I know there's a stigma where if someone were to come out and say, "Hey, this is the problem I have." probably wouldn't be very friendly <laughs> for them to do that but like you said it's about taking accountability the more people we see take accountability for this kind of stuff and saying hey i need help looking for help trying to find ways to integrate themselves back into a normal life where they're not harming other people that's what we need absolutely um the the pleading the fifth the shutting down survivors the bullying the harassment um the legislative changes in their favor in the favor of corporations in the favor of anybody who's abusing those are all things that need to change and um i really look forward to seeing that hopefully in the next couple of years. And, and i just want to say look if jehovah's witnesses because i know y'all always trolling my posts and jumping in my inbox and all of that if in fact you have nothing too high if in fact you have not hidden child abuse or done the things that the courts say then why are you paying hush money to Jehovah's Witnesses. Why are you paying out millions? We know that you are. We have the records. So if you're high, continually hiding abuses, you're gonna pay more than that. You're gonna pay millions more. And if I guess if y'all got it like that to keep doing it, go ahead. So let me let me say this. Now I this is a very touchy situation because I'm gonna bring the first name up. But T.I. had wrote a song, I think it was last year or the year before. And it was talking about situations like this. And he talked about how people are gonna get fed up and they're just gonna take action themselves. I'm not a person to say, go and go kill somebody. But there are people out here mentally that are so bothered by what is going on. And then they see what, what the people continue to do They'll take action themselves. And I think that, you know, for people to not even want to see things done right, and then the outcome is this. I mean, I, I'm, I'm like, Matt, I don't want to see nobody go to jail or, or killed or anything, but it's like you taking a child's innocence and then you stand up as if you're okay. You get married to your little wife and you got your little couple children. But do you remember them, them trips that you didn't took with me and probably like two other boys and maybe a little girl and you had them doing all types of things and carrying on? This is the stuff that I'm talking about. And then, now I know the Jehovah, I don't, I'm not, okay, I don't say I know, but I'm not sure the Jehovah's Witness have to deal with this part, but I know in Christendom, you have a lot of people talking about, oh, I have the spirit of discernment. Okay. So you got a spirit of discernment, and you didn't see this preacher doing this to the young man? You didn't see the young the the, the church mother or evangelist doing this to the to the young women? Y'all, y'all got the spirit of discernment, 
but y'all didn't notice that these that that this child went from jovial and happy to now they sitting off in the corner by themselves. You mean to tell me you are a prophetess or a prophet and you don't see, you can prophesy houses and cars and somebody gonna get a brand new man, but you can't see the hurting. See, the Bible says the fivefold is to rebuke and to reprove. Y'all mean to tell me that y'all can't rebuke these folks that standing up in the pulpit? Oh, I forgot them, your friends. Okay, I'm done, y'all. <laughs> oh, you're so silly, but you know what else, Jazz? <laughs> Jazz, as he go off the screen, there you go. <laughs> but we talked about this. The witnesses don't, they say Holy Spirit operate, but all you have to do is be, come in there, be a man, work your way up, do some chores around the church, and you move up, move up and up and up. It has nothing to do with being called or gifts that of ain't repentance. That's how these churches work. <laughs> <laughs> it has oh, nothing no. to do with that. What was that preacher's name, Bishop Eddie Long? Oh yeah, oh, I forgot about him. Where's he? Yo, want me to go there, Rans? Yo, want me to go there? He's dead. Bruce, Bruce think, is dead. He dead. And I don't think those boys got. I think they got a settlement, but they still were uh, uh, dragged by the church. Oh, you know, Bishop so. Eddie Long died how? in pride. You said how? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Bishop Ed Long died. He said he had cancer. Now, he probably has something. Could, that could be in many forms of cancer. Unspecified illness. <laughs> yeah, unspecified. We'll just say that. Okay. Y'all are so wrong in these comments. <laughs> we got to look at it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bishop Ed Long died. And you know what got me with Ed Long was Ed Long did a whole march against homosexuality only to be found out that you were sleeping with young men, traveling them around the world, paying uh, transgender women out here, sleep with them, and then to do a whole march. And I, me personally, I'm just like, what? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, mm -mm. That boy probably had AIDS. It's kind of irrelevant, but very funny um, in the fucked up way. Um, but um, so I, I'm I'm a Hungarian, as as you can read on the screen, and uh, our government is a very like white Christian supremacy kind of vibe. So very nice, very cool. Please assassinate someone. Anyway, and uh, one of the main, ma one of the main political leaders who was enacting homophobic and uh, other policies, just like le just like this January, was caught in uh, Brussels, fleeing an orgy with twenty five men and heroin, shimming out the window. And uh, it, it's just the whole thing of you, you, you are holding the Bible and being like homosexuality and and, and uh, depravity is a sin and all that. And then how how are you gonna be caught in the middle of a pandemic, breaking the lockdown law, uh, laws, having a twenty five man orgy with heroin, shimmying out the window? Like you can't make this shit up. I'm just like. Bro, how? What? What? Well, you know, just... you a... That's crazy. Good point. You a good point because Chester brought up Epstein. And who was the chick with, that was with him now? Maxwell is in jail now. The oh one that God. was his accomplice. They say you dropping tea from Hungary, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it. You know it. And, and uh, about Jehovah's Witnesses, they do this shit too. Like, if uh, I if I was a JW and some someone saw me smoking a cigarette, uh, I would be disfellowshipped publicly. Stated like Sister Molly has been disfellowshipped for engaging in smoking. This is how they would announce it publicly to the congregation, publicly, and then. I asked the elder, like, hey, so 
how, how, how do you process a, a, a pedophile? And he was like, well, we, we, we approve them, we disfellowship them. And I'm like, okay, uh, good. Do you announce why? And he was like, um, not really, because we Jehovah, um, ex Jehovah Witnesses, don't kill me. I'm just quoting an elder here. You are right. Uh, and he was like, Jehovah is a forgery. <laughs> God, and he wants us. He wants us to be in a good relationship with our brothers and sisters and we cannot label each other like this because the, the brother and sister would be ostracized and they wouldn't that stain wouldn't be uh, washed off their name and off their back and i was just there like you literally labeled people who leave apostate mentally diseased and satanic what the actual fuck are you talking about I don't want to. We don't want to label anyone, and Jehovah is not a god who would who, want, like who wants to label anyone. And I'm just like, I need to learn. I need to say you, that, Molly. You from Hungary? You. I need to learn how to say what they fuck. Fuck. That's how I need to learn that. Maybe they accept my words a little bit better. And I was just like, uh, they didn't know that I was an apostate, so they didn't know that I, I used to be a Je Jehovah's Witness. They okay, thought I, I don't, was. I don't mean to adore you, Molly, but Raz, I just want to let you know we thank you so much for coming on our platform. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much for sharing your story. If you guys want deep details or want to know other, Raz has spoken out in the media and he has been for years. He doesn't have to join this platform. Just do a Google search, go on a YouTube. It don't take but two seconds. He has been told his story over and over and over again. Brad, do you want to leave us off with any last words before you get out? <clears throat> well, I just want to thank you all for um, shining light on this. You know, you should. Uh, I commend all of y'all. You know, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone used to be a part of the Kingdom Hall, correct? Joe Witnesses? I, I, no, I'm yes. just in Christ. No. Okay. Well, except for Jives. Except all of us have except for Jives. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, no, I just think it's really cool that um, that we're all able to come together and, and, and use and use our voices to make one powerful voice. Um, it's going to be an on, ongoing journey, but I'm never, and I encourage you all to never stop speaking your truth. Um, you know, I'm going to make sure I follow everybody on Instagram, make sure I stay connected with everybody. I'm looking forward to that petition and circulating that. I'm also looking towards that intro video that you played, because I'm probably going to post okay. that. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I, you know I got you on that. I, I did that clip this morning. I got you. Nah, it's nice. You know, um, definitely have to move into some, have to shift gears and move into another project. I'm actually about to jump back in and work on the document. I know. But I just want okay, to well, it up. It's called Full Disclosures, directed by Travis Payne. We have some really excited producers. I'm sure you guys all will know the names. They'll be revealed pretty soon. It's going to be a nice series for us all to watch. Hopefully, I can incorporate you, you all are part of a part of this journey as well. Um, and let's just keep pushing forward and do whatever hey, we, we keep moving out there because that's really what it's about. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, again. Raz. I appreciate oh, it. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming. Just love. Thank man. you. One love. Much love. Much love. Joe. Peace. Sorry, right, he said now, no, y'all. Let, let me let me because because Matt, you you're you were an elder in the church. I'm an elder in the church. You know, I find it funny that and I, I'm. Y'all Jehovah's Witness. I'm coaching Church of God in Christ. Okay. Raz, thank you so much for coming on. Let me let me say this. And I, I want y'all to just make this make sense to me because it really don't make sense. And I'm not even gonna try to make it sense. It just is what it is. So the bishops can smoke, drink, commit fornication, sleep around with young men and things, and the church will build a facility. For rehabilitation, for rehabilitating the preachers. Y'all with me? Did I did I lose y'all? I hear you. Well, rehabilitate the preachers. But what about the people that said I here did? What about what about the bishop that got two babies out of wedlock by two of the young women in the church and got a, 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 a over here uh, sliding his meat to the, to the young. Little thirteen-year-old boy that's sitting over there playing the drums. So you, they get rehabilitation. But what about the, what about the people that they've done all this stuff to? Like, I make that make sense to me. What I was saying earlier was, it's so 
hypocritical to sit out here and to say that you're living a holy and set apart life when you're doing all these things and because you're supposed to be the man of God, no, I'm saying like this in turn, the man, the God, because you're supposed to be the man, the God, the man, the God gets a, a Scott free car. He get a get out of jail free car. The man of God can do all of this stuff and continues to do it. But people that he's been, or he or she has been involved with have to live with these things for the rest of their life. 